All right, so this will be a quick video on how to update the firmware on the P12S. Uh, I've got this picture pulled up, though, because a lot of people don't realize what version they have. Uh, the P12R was the original P12 from uh, j one sys It looks like this on the back side, so if you're going to turn around on the back side where you put the power into it, you would see that this one has no Cat5 plugs on the back whatsoever. However, the newer model, the P12S, which looks exactly the same on the top board. The top boards are actually, if you're looking at them from the top, are identical. But the bottom board is where the changes happen. So on the bottom board, the brains of the operation, there are two plugs here. This is raw DMX. So coming out of these two plugs, you could, if, for those of you switching from LOR to X lots this year, you could use that as your E131 to DMX bridge so that you wouldn't have to go out and buy a separate E131 to DMX bridge. You could just run the DMX natively off of the P12. Uh, so you'd hook up your, your crossover cable directly to one of those Cat5 plugs and the other end of it would go straight to your first LOR controller and you could run your LOR controllers in DMX mode. Uh, the crossover cable is important in that configuration so don't forget that. Uh, I think Clyde Lindsay has a great video on how to make you a crossover cable if you're not familiar with how to do it. but plug into it. Uh, also, you could use those little three-channel uh, dumb RGB controllers, or you could use a 27 dumb RGB board. You plug it right up there as well, and you can it'll let you be able to talk to your dumb controllers without having to have a bridge. So that's the main difference. Uh, if you're looking at them from the top, of course, like I said earlier, the top board is identical. Uh, that All that is is the output, the fused output board. They're, they're identical in almost all models, even the, the P12D that came out, uh, and a few other ones that here and there. But the P12R, the original one, has a smaller bottom board. The brains of the operation is smaller. The newer P12S is a much wider board. So it's, it sticks out quite a bit more, probably about another inch or so. So that's what the, the physical looky, when you're looking at them, that's what the difference is. Now, as far as the upgrading the firmware, you can upgrade the P12S to do 24 universes now. So two universes per plug uh, for a total of 24. In order to do that, first thing you want to do, you can you can do this a couple of different ways, but in the description I'll post a link to the hex files, the UBL that you'll need, uh, along with a PDF guide on how to how to update using the update the firmware using the UBL. Excuse me. Uh, so the very first thing you're going to need is that that set of files. So if we look here, I'll have to jump over to my OneDrive and get them. as soon as I figure out where I put them. There it is. P12S. So if we're looking here, here are all the files. Uh, these are just different versions of the hex file. Uh, and several of them will be depending on what model chip that you have. And I'll show you how to find that out as well. So if you haven't already, you should have power hooked up to the board. You should have the board plugged up to the computer. Have your... Uh, network configured already. If you don't know how to do any of that, you need to watch my other video first that shows you, walks you through how to actually configure the P12R and the P12S. Uh, once you've done that, you can log in. I'm actually Microsoft Edge works phenomenal with this. You can log into your P12. Uh, it goes really quick on Edge. I know on Google Chrome on the EDP2, it wasn't the quickest. It had some lag loading it up, but on, on Edge, it loads perfect. But anyway. So on the main page, here's your actual information about your P12. If you go to System Info, that's where you're going to see what version you have running on it. And you're also going to be able to see what kind of chip you have. So mine are currently on firmware version 3.4, and the chip is the LP047. 3.4 LP047. So mine has already been upgraded, but yours will probably have a different app version and a different ASIC Info version. But this will tell you, where you what kind of chip you have as well. Okay, so the first step is to go to the IP config and to log into the controller. It's ADMIN admin. Hit OK, and you want to enable the UBL. Okay, uh, you can do this USB as well. I just figure if you're already hooked up to Cat5, you might as well go ahead and use the Cat5 to enable the UBL. So, got the UBL enabled, you want to save the config, of course, and reboot the controller, hit continue, and hit reboot master. We're not going to do that, because I've already done it on mine. I'll just close this out. Once the board is coming back online, you want to open up the UBL. And inside that file, it's right here. This JUBL. Okay. Once you've opened up the UBL, 
you want to hit connect. Now you got to make sure that you got the correct IP address in here. If you change it from anything other than default, you'll need to enter that and hit enable. And this is under the Ethernet and just hit connect. And we're connected to the board. Now you can click on the UBL version number, which is 3.4 on mine, device info. Uh, and it'll give you all the device info, which is what we just saw. Now, if you click on each one of these down here, these are the three the three pieces of equipment that we're going to be updating, right? These are the three chips on the board. So ASIC one is 3.4, ASIC two is 3.4, and the master is 3.4. Now, if that's what it gives you, that means that your board is not currently in a state that you can upgrade it. Uh, so what you have to do is reboot the controller. Now there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could literally just hit reboot device here. Uh, I don't recommend that way. You could hit the reset button on the, fr button on the front of the controller. I don't actually recommend that way either. The best luck I've ever had is, let's go ahead and disconnect from here. So we're disconnected. The best luck I ever had is actually to kill power to it. So if you've got this thing on t uh, a power strip, it's probably your easiest way, just flip the switch off. So I just flipped it off on my desk. I know you can't see it. Uh, I'll flip the switch back on and I'll count to three and once I'm at three I'll hit the connect button. So switch back on, one, two, three, connect. Alright, so now we're, hooked, we're connected back to the board. We're going to here to ACIC, ASIC1 and we're still on 3.4. 3.4, well that one we got, the 1.3 is correct. These are not, we're still on 3.4. So we've got to disconnect again. Go back to the J1 Sys controller, kill power to it again, and we gotta try one more time. So maybe this time we'll turn power back onto it and then we'll immediately hit connect. So power switch is coming on now. We'll go over here and we'll hit connect. All right, so we're connected back to it. Now we're into it, 1.4, 1.4, and 1.3. That's what we wanted, okay. So now that we're hooked back into it, and now we're in a state where we can actually go in and change. Uh, the reason I took you through that whole little process is because a lot of people don't realize that if you wait too long and let the board boot completely up, you, it, it'll be out of a state where you can't, you can't edit it with the UBL. So at this point, we're at a good spot. We, we can go in here and edit the, the original firmware version and, and move them all up to that 3.4. So we'll start with the master. The master is the only one that's done differently. So we'll go to load hex file. And as you'll notice, it only gives you four or five different options here. Actually, four is what's in this one. Uh, we want to move it all the way to three underscore four. So the hex file three underscore four. Click on that. And then we're going to hit erase program verify, which is right here. And you can watch its progress down here in the bottom. It'll go through there and flash erase it, and then it'll verify it. Now, if your board has still got the test pattern enabled on it, and you have lots hooked up to it, and they may be doing something funky right now, just random colors here and there, uh, one or two bulbs lit up, just ignore what it's doing for now, okay? Yeah, so I believe we're done. Now, the next thing we want to do is go down here to ACIC, ASIC1 and we're going to go to load hex file and you'll see you have a lot more options for this. This is where the different chips come into play. So mine from where we looked at it before is the LP047 and we want to go to version 3 underscore 4. I tried 3 underscore 4B and it gave me some problems earlier so we're just going to go to 3 underscore 4. So we'll go to 3 underscore 4. Actually, you know what? Let's try 4B again. Why not? No better time to try something new than when you're doing a video. So let's try to load up 3.4. Uh, then you want to hit Erase. And you'll see some progress meter now here across the bottom. Success. It's been erased. Now you want to hit Program. So this will go back in and program it with 3.3 underscore 4B or 3. version firmware version 3.4B. Uh, 
All right, now we're gonna go to the next one, ASIC2. We're gonna load the hex file and we're gonna load up that same one. Three underscore four B, LP047, double click on it, erase. And then we're gonna hit program. And the lights may flash and do crazy stuff if you have the test pattern enabled as the board's loading the new firmware. All right, says it's all done now, so we've updated all three of them. All right, so both of those say 3.4, master 1.3. So now we're just gonna disconnect from it. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Then I'm going to reboot the board, and of course my preferred method of doing this is kill power to it, and then turn power back on. Okay, and then we're going to load back up. 10.10.10.10 and we're going to look at a system info and there it says 3.4 LP047 now this worked out really well too because it's still doing the craziness uh, I probably should have put a camera out here so you could see what's going on but you can't so it's still doing randomness so I'm going to roll this thing back to version 3.0 4 versus 3.4 B because this 3.4 is not working correct or 3.4 B is not working correctly on my particular board uh, I've seen other people say it worked fine for theirs didn't work for mine so I'm gonna roll it back to 3.4 so in order for me to do that I'm gonna close this I am going to open up the UBL so back to the files go back to the UBL and before I hit connect for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and kill the power to this thing. So power off. As soon as I flip power back on, I'm going to wait like two seconds and hit connect. So power's coming back on now. I'm going to hit connect. Okay. Now I'm going to go here. Version 1.4. Version 3.4. Now nope, they should all say 1.4. So I've got to go, or that one always says 1.3, but these two should definitely say 1.4. So are they doing that now? Nope, 3.4. All right, so let's kill power to it again. Disconnect. Kill power to it. Let it turn all the way off. Turn the power back on, and we're gonna immediately hit connect. Alright, 1.4, 1.4, okay, so now we're back where we're supposed to be at. Uh, the master's fine, I don't have to mess with it again, uh, but these two I need to fix. So we're in 1.4, which just means that we're in a state where we can edit it, so I'll go to load hex file, scroll down, and this the B did not work for me, so we're going to go here to this one, and we're going to hit erase, let it run through its thing down here. And we're going to hit program. And we're going to go to the next one. We're going to load hex file. 3 underscore 4 PO47. That's this one. And we're going to go to race. and program all right now we're going to hit disconnect and we're going to close out of the UBL 
then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to flip the power switch off and flip it back on. And I will wait to see if the test pattern works correctly. And we are back alive and the test pattern is working perfectly. Alright. Alright, so as you can see, 3.4B did not work for me. 3.4 uh, did. So you may have to try different files to find the one that works with your particular controller. So you're going to have to find the ones that match up with what kind of chip you have. Uh, and then see if 3.4b will work for you and if it wasn't if it does not roll back to 3.4 so that's how you change the firmware on the p12s i uh, hope that helps you out a little bit thanks